Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to John and Dylan Online. I like to get sucked off. This episode's about Google+. Plus. John Hastings on the other line. Speak on this, John. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about um, one of the great examples of how tech companies fucking lie and just exaggerate all the time. A thing that no one used almost right away, and they kept it going for eight fucking years, motherfucker. Started in Obama's yeah. first term, ended in Trump's first term. Truly the dream of the millennial arc. Didn't it start in 2011? That's Obama's first term. Oh, it is. Yes. Right. Yep. Right at the end. <laughs> right at the end. Snuck it in. Ooh. So it was basically active for only four years. And, and it wasn't active for four years. No, 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 no. They can suck well, they my penis. they put a bunch of cool shit in it. It's just that, like, social meds was turning from, like, hey, I have some friends I want to talk to, to I make videos. Yeah, well, basically, they got killed by the great enemy of the internet, the pivot to video, the greatest crime never enforced in any way. Literally, let's destroy so many media companies. Uh, whose fault is it? <laughs> Not mine. My name's Mark. I'm, I'm eating a pear. You know, the funny thing is, I read about the pivot to video, or sorry, heard about the pivot to video on one of the first podcasts that this, like, mixed martial arts guy did, and he was working for, like, and now here's a fucking... Here's a weird throwback that no one read. Vice Sports, which was just this I one guy Vice Sports. Yep. talking about whatever. And then Vice Sports was like really fucking stupid because they already had Deadspin, which is pretty much what Vice wants to be. Like that yeah. kind of shitty asshole thing. So, yeah, on Vice Sports, this dude was fucking doing whatever. And uh, then he was like, yeah, they're telling me to like make videos now, which doesn't make any sense to me because if everyone's going to be reading at work, wh- how would they watch a video at work? But they were right. Yeah, the pivot to video. Well, they were they were right and they were wrong. It was Facebook's ability. Facebook was attempting to like basically kill the internet. And one of the ways they were doing that was preventing people from websites going somewhere else. Put your videos on Facebook. will artificially yeah. boost the views. Ha 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 ha. Now we have your business model. Like kill, kill the internet is a very apt way of saying it. They really fucking, cause this was the other thing. I remember having that meeting. I mean, we talked about this, but I had a meeting with an agent in Edinburgh and the agent was saying like my client put her video on Facebook and it had 10,000 views in one day. And then obviously as we talked about, in another attempt at doing an actual serious episode, uh, nobody fucking, those were lies. And oh, they lies. find them basically the equivalent of, like, imagine I just, like, erased every other comedian in the Toronto area, and then they were like, Dylan, you shouldn't have done that. We're finding you 150 bucks. I'm like, well, hey, that we're is, giving you. Sorry. We're giving it to you. We're giving you 150 bucks. The fine is we give you that. Wait, what? How is that a punishment? It is, though. It's such little money to be given. <laughs> yeah no you look like a bitch i mean one of the pivot to videos things that bl- like lives rent free in my mind is someone Ooh, yeah they, let's talk this fucking, fucking ai slang th- because this you person is a, we're gonna get we're gonna <laughs> fucking get to google plus in a second this person this honestly lives rent free in my mind this lives rent free in my mind this person got famous Slay. because they boosted a clip of theirs on facebook like they boosted they paid i remember the numbers they paid 250 dollars, and then the person browbeat their producer to putting in another 250 and it was literally like i think the day that facebook turned on the like like make video big and this video went everywhere because it was boosted part of how facebook works is if you boost they'll show it more places and so this video went everywhere and this person like people like were like well this is fame this is the next wave and they had like they became a diva they became a monster and literally like it was just their profile was supercharged because of the time they posted. They posted like three videos in the span of about a year. They went fucking nuts. And then this person literally, it's like, can't get any of the clips to react because the algorithm has totally moved on. And literally this person's career is over. And it's like, it's also because of the person's behavior. But I always think about this where it's like, it literally, like people changed their structure of their whole lives and careers based off of the bullshit of one man. And we're now doing the same. We're living in the same thing, by the way, with, the competition to TikTok. We're both reels. We're both Randy reels on old social social meds. And if TikTok goes away, I feel like Instagram will be like, "We're back to food photos." Fuck all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even like this video anyway, you bitch. I uh, guess what? It's me, Mark Zuckerberg. I was once mocked by a comedian at the San Francisco Punchline. 
vengeance is mine. I mean, here's what I like about the old double T thing. I hope they go off video. I hope everyone has to start posting to YouTube shorts the hellscape that that is because t- I've said this before, but like I posted in real on TikTok. Maybe someone comments with the someone's username. Hey, you might like this. I posted it on Instagram. You're looking at like a, I'd say it's like a half of a Facebook comment, like just like kind of like a glob of like, like if the TikTok is about how I ate a sandwich and it made my stomach hurt, it's just like a breakdown of why you should never eat sandwiches because sandwiches are the devil. It's correct. YouTube. Or. YouTube. I, uh, I had a video do well and the top comment was just someone saying Jew. And then yeah, one yeah, guy yeah, went. Yeah, yeah. Why are you saying that? And then the guy commented that they everyone should know he's a Jew. And then a guy went retarded take, and that was oh. that's that's the best case scenario for YouTube. Most of it's oh, just my YouTube like comments. I want to fucking I could kick the shit out of this guy. <laughs> I popped into my YouTube comments. A lot of them are like, if this guy comes to my house and tries this kind of comedy, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of him. Mm-hmm. To which I always am like, it's a lot of threats. Co- because you know the thing about YouTube, I looked in the analytics. TikTok shows it to 50% men and women. Instagram shows it to mostly men. YouTube shows it to literally, if you're a man, you post something, they show it to men. <laughs> so it's like, it's just literally you walking in. It's you walking into one of those bars where no one's looking up and trying to make everyone happy. That's what a YouTube I gotta tell comment you, is. <laughs> it makes me like YouTube so much more. That's like This is the thing with Google. Let me Between Google and Meta. Well just get in the camera and be like, eat meat over the stove. It'll yeah, cook whoa, in your whoa. belly and then fuck the stove. Because what's some a stove think but ta- a pussy for food? Some people think talking about their feelings makes them a homosexual. I'm so much a man, I think talking does that. <laughs> Googie Plus. They put so okay. much fucking uh, shit into Google Plus. By the way, there's... Uh, because they were clearly... No one was using it, so they were like, okay, you need to be able to make long-distance phone calls. We're going to put Zoom in there, and it's so much easier to use than Zoom ever was. Uh, we're going to... Like, everything that's in the Google suite, they just put into Google Plus so they could have, oh, we have an average user base of 500 million, but what they didn't tell you right away was... We're counting Gmail in that. Like when you're like, that's the it thing. was like threads where they were like, yeah, you're on Google Plus now because <laughs> you have a Gmail account. So you're on Google Plus. This was the first or one of the first that they had AI to recognize people in the photos, which is how they got into a lot of. So recently, Google AI got into trouble with because it's being too woke where you type into Google AI. Right, show me the founding fathers. Also, and it'll show can I you, just like, say something? Yes, this just shows the podcast feed that I'm operating in. Dirt. Do you know what that turned out to be? Do you know what that turned out to be? What? Not true. They like they went they they reversed engineered the example that was being used of like Gemini is too woke. It's only making black people. And then like two nerds on fucking asshole TikTok that I frequent. This is how you know it's a long haired man speaking in a deep voice, even though he looks like he would have a high voice. And there's full animation <laughs> underneath. Love that shit. Oh, no one and would... you know who loves that shit more than anyone? This bitch right here. And this guy literally looked in the camera and went, I was a Google programmer. Let me explain to you how they did it. They yeah. typed in black person founding fathers, and then they just didn't show the search bar. It's not hard. And I was like, this guy fucking gets it, man. This guy fucking gets it. And then well, I watched the some Google of his other videos, app, and he does not get it. Pardon me? With the Google Photos app, what was happening was... The AI was, there would be a picture of a black family, and the AI would say it was. Oh, no. Property? Monkeys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's what, so they overcorrected. <laughs> and then they were like, the founding fathers, all Asian. Yeah, I love, I'm going to say this right now about society. I have no problems with it. I love that because it's always that. It's never, we were just trying to be good people, or it was a misunderstanding. It was like, oh, look. Here's the reason why we gave all those kids free cookies. I killed their parents today, and by them eating the cookies, legally binding is no longer our fault. Also, the cookies might be poisonous. Also, I already am dead. And you're like, wait, what? Why did you do any of this? And you're like, ah, this is corporate America, man. Here's what I don't like about it, though, is that no one can just say, oh, that's funny, and move on. Even if, like, if I make a video Jesus where I say Christ something Christ. is funny then people will be like, why do you think that's funny, that's serious? And it's like, no, because you have to. If you take everything the same level of serious, you're going to go insane. 
Yeah, this is my same way where I feel like conspiracy theories should only be read at night. Part of the problem with the internet is you can get any <laughs> like kind ghost of ghost stories. Exactly, you can only you can get any of that kind of information anytime. And reading about conspiracy yeah. theories at nine like a.m. in the morning, you're like, I think this motherfucker's onto something. But you read that at eleven thirty p.m. tired, just trying to unwind from the day, and you're like, get the fuck out of here. The IRS has an army, you motherless fucks. You know what also, I mean? Also, it should be you should totally write. Society was a bit better when you had like I don't think I should be able to go you should have a breathalyzer before you're able to go on Amazon past nine. You oh, should have a, every phone well, I don't should have a, think it should be a breathalyzer and then it's like okay you could buy fucking or like if it's like breathalyzer, okay you can order food but you could have a breathalyzer if you're gonna buy clothes. Like don't I buy do a much, cloak. I do, I, no no I go I go much better than that. I totally agree with you. Here's the step. It's much simpler than breathalyzer. All that happens before the purchase is complete, someone calls you. You just have to say with your voice what you're buying. That'll stop you right there. Because in your head, you're going to be like, that's so funny. We need eight lava lamps. We fucking need eight lava lamps. Look, my, excuse me, our bedroom will be a hippie crash pad. Do you not want to sleep in a hippie crash pad? Oh, I didn't realize you're better than the hippies. You know what I mean? But say that out loud. Yes, I'm purchasing eight lava lamps, 38 years old. You're right. I'll cancel the credit card. You know what I mean? Like they're problem taken care of. Yeah, like putting your own name on a uh, Facebook or YouTube comment isn't enough. You should also. I thought age, because everyone gets all like, "Why are a female comedian age. will it put a fucking age. clip online yeah, and then they get called a whore?" It should be like Dave Anderson, thirteen years old. You're a whore. You're like, all right, yeah. thirteen. <laughs> yeah, who gives a shit? That's also, by the way, also that will stop marital status. So ma- would be nice too. Divorced, you're a whore. Yeah, of course you believe Here's that. Here's what it is. If you're divorced, you can put divorced and not your age, and that makes it even better. <laughs> divorce? D- d- divorce? Maybe it's just me. I don't find boats that are blue to be appropriate to America. Brandon, divorced. And you're like, yeah, of course. Of fucking course. Or you get on divorce. There's like a different type of social media just for divorced men and women for like three months. Just for your, your stride. Yeah, it's called the sink, and you're just fucking like... And, like, they have their own specific influencers who just exist for you to put your trauma onto them. It's just, yeah, it's just way, a crying influencers... man trying to make a sandwich while a bunch of women are like, you probably got a soft dick, don't you? You probably can't Shut get up. hard, just like my, my fucking shitty husband. But, yeah, but what would make it rewarding for all the divorce guys is he just takes it. He's, and he just he responds. He's like, yeah, you would say that. And yet I still pay the child support. So they could be home. Yeah. <laughs> oh no i uh this was a pandemic idea i had which was my uh brother-in-law still gets along with his uh first baby moms they have a child together and even she, he was doing some construction uh with her company and i was like you should have that as a thing where you say you know you have to basically give a little top and tail of why you guys broke up and then the mu- the mum or whatever in the house who's getting the renos done gets to verbally abuse you for extra money, and then she shows up on site and is like, "Yeah, he is a piece of shit." And then that would be good. Yeah, Unload I think that would your totally... day on a guy who's also fixing your house. So what you're saying is you pay an extra fifty bucks, and you're like, "For the- I'm the avatar of your ex husband for an extra seventy five. That oh, I gotta tell you, fifty bucks. No, you fucking, it'd be like two hundred an hour extra, but they'd pay it." Uh, you'd pay it. Oh my god, you pay it. I also, I got news for you. Dudes would pay it just to fucking yell at a guy. Uh, fuck you, bro. <laughs> oh no, you can't yell at a guy. Yeah, well, man that's true. Construction thing. We don't workers. If a man, thing. if a man tried to do that to another construction worker, especially in Canada, well, then you're about to see a guy who's wearing an open winter jacket, even though it's extremely cold. Uh, take a swing at a homeowner. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah oh my I god remember... it smells like beer in that basement yeah they've been drinking they're working drywall do you want the drywall guys to be sober because then your fucking shit's getting fucked up and they're shitting in the wall bro you want them drunk here's one thing i never understood about uh construction and i never vocalized it because i have a history of vocalizing something i think to people and then them getting like really nervous because all right, here I'll set the thing. Okay, yeah. So well, I, Jay, you, no, we didn't know you spoke. When would you allow German, someone in your house? Your birthday, you went. Let me speak on this, and then you just fully recited a variety of Hitler speeches, and we were like, <laughs> "He speaks German," and your wife was like, "Not that I was aware of." 
one of those movies with only one good funny part is the wet i think it's called the wedding ringer and it's kevin hart writes people's wedding speeches and that's all he does and then they bail on it and the guy tries to improv it and he's like oh no, this guy's in trouble and then he's like i think hitler said it best oh no and then he gets escorted off the stage at his own wedding anyway i um hour and I a half this about, one good laugh i can say this about kevin hart I think that he has photos of a Hollywood executive doing something horrific because I have never seen Kevin Hart stand up. I one time was like, oh, this is funny. I have never seen him appear on screen and thought this is a charming, engaging, fun guy to watch. Really? Yeah, I do not I love find Kevin him good. Hart. I love Kevin Hart stand up. Kevin Hart. I like one of Kevin Hart stand up very much. The one with fire. I think it's a really fun way to do an arena. But I find Kevin Hart's energy very fucking irritating. Really? I find Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart is Kevin Hart is the king of I am a five foot one guy, so I'm a shithead, and I disguise all my asshole behavior in I struggle and I hustle. Kevin Hart, very famously, if you didn't know his name at uh, the Los Angeles Comedy Store, he would spit at you. He would just spit at the door, guys. I'm and this is not when truth, Kevin Hart I'm was famous. I'm going to truth destroy that. I don't believe that for a second. Not my Kevin. Go ahead. I said <laughs> not my Kevin. Believe? That's my point. Not my Kevin. All right. That's fine. Let me put it this way. There's a story of Patrice O'Neill telling Kevin Hart to cool, like to calm down with his behavior. And when Patrice O'Neill is like, hey, man, I just told those two women that women can't read and they should drink my piss. You need to chill out. Like, that's that's an indictment. <laughs> I mean, that's like if I knocked on the door while you're on the toilet and said, you okay in there, buddy? You know what I mean? That's you're like, oh, my God, what is wrong with me if that guy's concerned? See, I talked to another, uh, I guess you'd say he's famous comedian. And I was like, Kevin Hart seems like a guy who's like probably fucking psycho offstage. And he was like, no, I mean, everyone I because they came up in Philly together and he was like, no, man. I mean, everyone is so happy for Kevin and thinks he's a great guy. So John's wrong. He actually said John's wrong. I've been wrong before. I'm fine being wrong. The real house a husbands of Hollywood is great. It's like curb your enthusiasm, but to me, a uh, higher hit rate. Here's something about curb your enthusiasm. Where can you believe they improvised that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I completely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cur- I mean, I think Larry David's is- super funny, but like, yeah, I could totally believe they're just improving this bullshit. Like, I also don't understand when people are like, oh, it's so amazing what Larry David could do. And I'm like, yeah, what you guys don't understand is he's actually proving that you, anyone can do that. If you give professional high-level actors like an unlimited budget and they can take 11 takes to make it funny, yeah, you're going to get a great show. Like, I don't understand. People are like, how was Curb Your Enthusiasm successful? The funny guy from the funniest sitcom of the sitcom era started making a show with an unlimited budget. I don't know how it was fun. Like, what? Where do you work, motherfucker? <laughs> well, that's one of the other things where it's like when you have those resources, exactly like one of our friends said this about Lonely Island, where it's like people really like that video where T Pain was with them on the boat. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I wish I could write a sketch where T Pain was in it and then T Pain actually showed up instead of one of my friends dressed like T Pain. <laughs> also, what no one talks about is like, I really wish T Pain could also give us a beat for this song. That's the other thing is it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where they're like, oh, you know, Michael Bolton was in the song. It's like, and Michael Bolton's also an exceptional singer, which helps the song be better, you fucking psychos. No, oh, I know all no, the time. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. Michael Bolton has the voice of an angel. And if you want to fucking end this podcast right now forever by fucking coming at me for the bold man. Michael you Bolton know. came up with Google Plus just to get kids online. And when it failed after a year, he abandoned the ship. That is that the is point not of this true. podcast. That is not true. He was trying to make a circle for his fans. And a lot of his fans are young because they understand the glory of music. <laughs> so uh, you can the, fucking criticize a lot of people dylan but i will not have you criticize michael bolton let me ask what's you, one of the first things that you, pissed people off about google plus john the circle feature the interface was very annoying also two of my friends as soon as it came out when this is the future of social media and i remember being this was one of the first times i heard the term social media and one of them was like i'm gonna put all my comedy show information on here everyone's going to come to my comedy shows. And I was like, no, they're not. This is not going to work. And I was right. I was really right. Good. I'm glad that you took down those two mystery friends, both of which I assume are Kevin Hart. No. One of them was uh, Evan, who was so Mm -hmm. like, this is the way to promote comedy shows. And I was like, I don't think it is. I remember that so specifically. Well, once again, like I said, like it's not for 
It's not for amplifying your personal brand, which people say now. It was for meeting people and hanging out. Honestly, I never really used Google Plus at all. The only no. thing I know is they pissed a lot of people off because they wanted you to have your real Christian white name, <laughs> name on there. Yeah, they were really and, uh, white. And they were white. <laughs> that made people automatically dump their usernames, which is twofold. The, the understandable part of it is some people had YouTube accounts. They wouldn't tell you where you were dumping your YouTube. It, so yeah. they would, you would dump your username that you had built up a huge brand with, even if it's like a character. Like you have two million followers playing a character, and now you're like Rick Stevens instead of Dr. Peanut Butter. And also, like some of these people had anonymity for a reason. Like they were like, I want to be yeah. known as Butterfly Boy because my fans are fucking nuts. And then they're like... Her name is Laura, Sarah Lawrence, and her social security number is. <laughs> yeah, and also, yeah, like if you're doing a political podcast where you're like, or whatever, like a political channel. Or, or you're a woman on the internet. Let's brass tax. You're that's, a woman yeah, on the internet. That's an easier way to say one it. time been like, I'm okay with dudes and sex with dudes. That was a mistake, Clarissa. <laughs> penis well, photo, penis photo. <laughs> well, also, sometimes you're 13 and you want to call a man a fat titty pussy and uh now i gotta put my real name instead of like xxx game zone xxx yeah wait a minute first of all alfred penis 420 was telling barack obama to get out of the white house not darren mcleod attorney at law. <laughs> not fucking q on x or whatever i would like you to know that q had not ex- did not exist until the very end of google plus what Oh, well, here's the thing. Uh, they had a, they had a thousand. Pe- they built a specific building for Google Plus. They had a thousand people who were working in there, and this they moved is the this CEO is like the height. There. This was also the height of Silicon Valley, where they were like, "We got a room just for the money." What do you mean? Like you're not like putting the money? <laughs> but no, no, we have so much money that there's just a room for the extra money. What do yeah, you do? Yeah. What do you do in that room? Our CEO just goes in there and just jacks up. <laughs> yeah, you Scrooge McDuck's into the money, and then you have to suck him out. If you had a billion dollars, what would you do with it? Let me tell you the first thing I would do with it. Call everyone that's ever been a dick to me and let them know. <laughs> My penis is big now. <laughs> what would I do if I had a billion big. dollars? I don't know, man. Not much. I'd just fucking play video yeah. games. Oh, I'm not playing video. I'm doing nothing. I literally, you. this is what you do occasionally say. What's that noise? Oh, that's John Hastings whistling. Wait, what? He's like, yeah, that guy has like, he like, he grew up around a lot of people that were in the depression, so financial insecurity was drilled into his brain at a level that should not happen for, say, a four-year-old. And so the idea of not having to worry about that anymore has caused him to... I have never seen someone... It's like he keeps having wet dreams while he's awake and not turned on. He's just coming out of the pure ecstasy of it all. Yeah, I would start... Um, honestly, I'd have a plane like Epstein's, but it'd be to play PlayStation 1, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You'd have a private island, but it's not to do dirty sex. It's just where you can go and eat uh, um, <laughs> uh, f- uh, Red Alarm Cheetos and uh, Mountain Dew Code Red without the prying eyes of your family. Dylan, where are you going? I'm going to that island to eat the way I want to eat. Nothing but peanut butter M&Ms and pizza. No sauce. <laughs> extra cheese. <laughs> I remember we got a PlayStation. No, it was a friggin' original Super Nintendo to work. And uh, we played NHL 94 till 4 in the morning, and uh, our mutual friend Matt O'Brien came home at 4 in the morning, and his wife said, you're not even drunk. Why the fuck aren't you drunk? And he's like, oh, we didn't drink. And she's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> that oh, was pretty good. Drink. Just a lot of yeah, really- cheese on the fingers. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. too. I played video games too late with my friends, and we talked First about First of all, secrets. you're looking at an, a Stanley Cup champion, a little team called the Hartford Whalers. <laughs> enough about who's drunk, maybe a little fucking congratulations. Do you know how fucking remember. difficult it is to get that franchise over the line? There's no, oh. con, there's no base. Hartford? Connecticut? Yeah. Come on. Try and get you're those competing against, come out. You're competing against the fucking New York Rangers fucking... I draw and you want me to fucking drink while I'm managing that team? Guess again, sweetheart. Well, you could say Google Plus is the first real big swing and a miss that Google had, and then they have Google Glasses. Um, when was Google Glasses? I'm gonna go with the first big swing and a mess was Google child porn. <laughs> that was over the line oh, and inappropriate. What? Do you not remember that in 2008? They were like, listen, if you can't beat them, join them. We're launching <laughs> Google Child Porn. <laughs> Google Tub. 
Yeah, yeah. Google yuck. Uh, and then yeah, Google Plus was <laughs> Google yuck is pretty good. No, it is not. There was yeah. What basically Google Plus was exactly that. The first big swing and a miss. Also, Google Plus was classically designed very much by people that are programmers. So a bunch of the interfaces was not intuitive. It wasn't that user friendly. And the launch was just fucked. And basically what it was was Google was like, we'll just we'll just do Facebook, but we're Google, so it'll be better. And not realizing that, like, basically the second they launched, Mark Zuckerberg like was like, oh, they want to be evil. Oh, they I am evil. And he basically made, like, there's stories of, he basically made programmers stay all night, constantly improving, finding every thing that google plus was putting out they would adapt it into a facebook product and put it onto the site as fast as possible yeah well they they had the google plus basically just became the google photos app which is good but there was some parts of google plus that were like google hangout was the best google hangout was the like if let's be totally honest if google hangout like would have blown zoom out of the water in its early way of like it was the most user friendly, easy way to do any sort of video chat. You like it, um, like it was all so fucking intuitive, and they fucking torp- torpedoed the whole goddamn thing. This is how easy it was to fucking use. When Brendan Burns and I were doing those fucking wrestling commentaries, Brendan figured out how to use it, and we were able to record it. And I'm going to say this to everyone right now: Brendan in those years was the greatest combination of incredibly technically confident and holy shit did not know what he was doing. Like I plugged the computer into the TV. <laughs> now we're Twitch streaming. And you're like, no, we're not. We're just, now we're just watching TV on a computer. Now that's what that's the Twitch streaming. You're like, what? what once you- I fun, once I finish plugging in this VCR, we're going to be big on TikTok. What, yeah, let me do you know, have to like film a, it? No, they just play, just plug it in, man. I just bought a used bookstore. You know what that means? We're about to fucking go big on Twitter. <laughs> what were your experiences with Google Plus? Did you have any? I didn't. I remember friend, trying to join it once Geo and then not doing it. Send a lot of DMs on Google Plus, and I we had a conversation with him in 2012 in a basement on Gladstone in Ottawa. That he seriously needed to stop sending us messages on Google Plus because we are not reading them, and it's really fucking weird. Yeah, and I, remember, it was, I remember it was like, how, what's the difference between this and sending someone an email? Why does this even need to exist? Exactly. And also, you would get an email, hey, someone sent you a message on Google Plus, but it wouldn't show you the message, so you'd be like, oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, I don't me- think I ever got a message on Google Plus. I did. The thing is, is if you had friends that worked within tech, what it was was Geo is a was a yeah. tech guy. He's an IT, like he's a computer guy, like and has been forever. I remember in like 2013, he was like, "You got to get into this Twitch," and I was like, "Shut up!" Um, but, but they said that for everything. Tech guys like remember Google Glasses, like oh they're just trying God, to make yes. these glasses. But then I'm like, "Sorry, John, I wasn't. I, oh, sorry, were you talking to me? I was just watching." porn <laughs> just well, part watching of this, fucking it, girls get stuck in the microwave or whatever now part of the reason why all these companies really leaned into facebook and all that sort of stuff is because they actually are aware that there's after the iphone and after a couple of the big improvements to the iphone we're not looking at any big technological leap here for a long ass time which is why there was a big ass push for google glass there's currently a big ass push for ai is because they're trying to replicate the leap forward that the iPhone, for less of a speaking, the iPad, Facebook did to the marketplace. And that shit's not coming because sometimes you go through giant periods where technology is not life-changing. It's just an incremental improvement. So the next solution is we go to Silicon Valley and we kill all these people. Wait, what? Yeah. Well, it's not that it's not improving. It's just that like they want you to buy another fucking thing. Yeah, they want you to. Sp- they want every year for you to give them between two and four thousand yeah, dollars. That's exactly it. They want yeah. you to like buy the glasses. Then you need a new phone. Then you need a watch. Then you need an iPad. Like that's what that's What's, what the disgusting perverts and shit con. What I am pussy really want. enjoying. What I am really enjoying, and only I, a giant dork, would be following this. Which is the EU is currently like going after Apple and the tech companies hard about this stuff, like the amount of things you can sell. You have to put the headphones back in the box when you buy the uh, iPhone, all that sort of stuff. And the oh, hearings are very, 
the hearings are very fun because it's like an Apple slick back lawyer. Actually, I think you'll find the regulation, blah, 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 blah. and then they're responded to by a very assholeish old Belgian man who just goes, no, I think you'll find we changed the regulations, and now you must do that. And it's really satisfying because it's like this slick back guy named Corey. I, I think you'll find if we look at this pie chart, it's very important. No, because I am a French person. And this is progress, and we stand against it. There should be different. There should be like, okay, we have a different congressman for different things, and when they have the tech hearings, it should be like no one under fifty is allowed because some of the questions that they asked in the U.S. Senate about TikTok, it's like, so if I tell TikTok that I like coats, will it show me pictures of coats? Um, it's videos mostly, and you have to type it in. Can you, for, I don't know, everyone else, but certainly not me, describe what a typing is? Yes. Hello. My granddaughter, Amanda, is dating a, and I don't want to get in trouble with the woke or Roddy, a black. Do you, does TikTok give you the ability to kill him? <laughs> if I tell TikTok I don't want to see any of them, can I not see any of them? Yes. Can Hello. you sort videos by race on TikTok? If not, where why is the not? part of where's the part of TikTok that started Gamergate? I want to start Gamergate again. Do you know where that <laughs> happened, sir? There's not enough Gamergate happening now. Yeah, excuse me. D Gamergate. Was that you guys? Yeah, no, it's the TikTok thing is very interesting because you're like, well, they're trying in a way this is a good thing, but they're doing it for the worst reason. We're building an orphanage, but we're building it on top of a bunch of people that could have survived if we didn't build a building on top of them. It's basically the story <laughs> of TikTok. We're like, I don't know how you guys are doing this. You're doing a good thing in the worst way. Welcome to hell. Well, I mean, we're recording this ahead of time. There's a chance that TikTok could be actually banned by the U.S. government. I mean, so embarrassing. I mean, if it gets banned, that's fucking crazy. I mean, I think it might. I think it's going to get banned, and then we're going to have a whole long freedom of speech discussion. It's going to get into this whole fucking thing. What's very interesting is it also sets a precedent for them to come after the American tech companies, which they won't do. Like, that's the other thing is, like, this sets a huge precedent for privacy and a bunch of other things that they're like, are we going to enforce this on Facebook? Because, okay... TikTok, how it works is it's all stored in a giant file that is searchable in theory by the Chinese government. Facebook's data collection and all that sort of stuff is just all on their servers and more than once it's been hacked and that shit has been taken. So it's one of those things where it's like, I'm loving the actual idea behind this of holding these companies accountable. And once we're done with TikTok, let's move on to fucking Zuck, baby. I mean, that's the whole thing about it, right? It's like, hey, the Chinese government can't have our citizens' information only yeah. weird guys from our country might yeah. have our citizens' information. I'm going to say this right now as a U.S. senator from Virginia. Do you know who's going to be able to have all of our passwords and every information so you can actually model the person perfectly? A weird guy who's really into Marcus Aurelius and Mark Anthony. I do not want some Singaporean man with bangs to have the data of my voters. I want it to be a guy who sucks. Who sucks. <laughs> It is pretty good to have a spy app that's just like, hey, here's some fucking people dancing, and uh, you can watch whatever you want on this TV. You just got to give us all your personal information, and we're telling you we're going to take your personal information, and people are like, yeah, that sounds good. Rather than yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh. ooh, it's a lady smoking a long cigarette, and she's going to try and fuck Dick Cheney, but Dick Cheney is going to tell her about a soup he made that he's really proud of. Uh, you, you wouldn't think that with my heart condition, barley soup would be good for me, but it's actually very good for me. Oh, imagine Dick Cheney's small talk must be a fucking nightmare. Have you ever, uh, have you ever held the skull of an Afghani child just <laughs> in the night? It's very <laughs> pleasing. <laughs> I watch CNN mostly, and I boo whenever it's not war footage. Boo. Don't so yeah, that's what daddy likes. Boo. I have a question. Do you know what Dick Cheney's favorite pastry is? And I hate that I know it, but I do know what it is. Uh, ooh, it's a girl's ass that she just worked out. It's close. Cheese Danish. I like a cheese Danish. I don't I like, like a these things where it's like, and I've no, said no, this before. No, no. I'm trying to speak truth to power here, John. Don't I want you fucking to. silence me. Go ahead. I don't take. like it when people are like, you know, they, they do this Hitler all the time where they're like, yeah, he killed, you know, millions and millions of people and gypsies and Jews. And he was a vegetarian. It's like, it's enough that he killed people. Can, you don't need to keep adding things. 
I completely agree to I, why I bring cheese Danish up is cheese Danish is a fine pastry, but it says something about your personality where you're like, I'm putting that number one. You're like, you're putting okay. that over the almond croissant, you fucking psychopath. Absolutely not. Like I've never had a bad almond is, croissant. You're really right. Exactly. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, I understand personal preference, but let's fucking live in the real world here, Dick. What are you doing? <laughs> I like that this Google Plus episode has set a new record for not talking about the thing. Because here's the thing with Google Plus. This is the story of Google Plus. A giant corporation made a very expensive mistake in 2011, and they did not own up to that until 2019. Like it's literally, what's the story of Google Plus? It started, it was bad. A fine tradition of failure continued for almost a decade. Then Google was like, well, we got a pandemic coming that we planned. I mean, nothing. Time to shut it down. But it's also one of those things where these failures don't affect the actual company. Like, New Coke was a fucking horrible fucking thing for the Coca-Cola company. And then they brought back original Coke. But... Tick, like Google, it's too big to fail at this point. Like, well, it is and it isn't. We don't know exactly if Google had, let's say, not spent this many, this much power and resources on Google Plus, would the Android be that much better of a alternative to the iPhone? You know what I'm saying? Like, these, there is a still a huge amount of resources poured into this phone, or pardon me, poured into this platform that could have been poured into a different technology. You know what I'm saying? They could have had a meeting and they're like, "What if we're Google ethic, ethical, ethical Google?" Oh, yeah, or what if our search engine was good? Yeah, what if our what? If, hey guys, what if we instead of just using our search engine to just direct people towards ads that we've somehow guessed they'd like, but don't quite get it? Did we just act like a search engine? No, 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 no. We can't no. do that. That would be helpful. No, fuck that. Make them. Yeah. What are they going to do? Use Bing. Huge laugh in the room. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create an AI, which isn't an AI. It's just a voice interact version of the search engine we already had. And we're going to make them pay for it. But because we're a bit behind on the technology, <laughs> it also doesn't actually work. And it just does the same thing as our search engine because it's based off of the current model. So <laughs> we're in trouble. Yeah, we're going to make Siri again, but call it something different. Yeah. But I mean, AI's AI's good. AI is not good. What Google is going to save Google in my mind is Google is the, they're the ones that are taking it real slow with the driverless cars. And they're the ones that have actually like, we're mapping it using sonar, which is like all science agree how driverless cars have to go. And that it's the car is being fed back a 3d map in real time of what's it seeing. So it can uh, adjust as opposed to the Elon Musk method, which it's a bunch of cameras. So it doesn't know the difference between say the underneath of a truck or a tunnel, which is, it's becoming a bit of an issue. Well, do you know the the Honda Corporation's actually come really uh, close with this other thing? Um, it's a CRV, but they put a flashlight on the wheel, so you fuck it while you drive. Oh my God! You know, let me say this right now: whoever is the genius of that company who went, you fuck while you drive. I assume they just two CEO, two corporate executives died because they were stood clapping for too long. <laughs> <laughs> and for what about women? They said, and then the guy gave the finger to the guy who asked that question and everyone <laughs> laughed. The guy who actually gave him the finger also then threw up and he died also because he yeah. couldn't stop throwing up and laughing yeah, when yeah, he choked. Yeah. He was considering women. <laughs> then, they did, then they buried him in fleshlights. <laughs> oh yeah they oh yeah we forgot to mention dirt, it was just a bunch of used flashlights yeah what you guys don't understand what we've uncovered in this episode that all major corporations secretly tie back in an illuminati style to the flashlight corporation <laughs> <laughs> i remember someone was making uh said that they were going to make a dildo <coughs> for their girlfriend out of their own dick which i thought was pretty good i'm gonna say this and no Can one you ever imagine never getting your fucking girlfriend a dildo here's my dick bro <laughs> I mean, I I want to meet that guy. I want to. I want to. Yeah, he's good. He's got. A, he got a silicon mold of his penis, and at no point did he be like, "This is not a way to ask someone to marry you," but this is the best way to ask someone to. Yeah, marry Yeah, the ring's you. on there. It's real thin. Yeah, thin. Opposite of my dung. No, anyway. no, no. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I always think about is Flashlight was started in part, there was a guy working there named Aubrey who met their, at the time, biggest sponsor, Joe Rogan in 2011 said, Hey, let's start a health company. Joe Rogan was like, great. It's called on it. That's where all those fucking weird pills that Joe Rogan promotes is just his own company with a guy from the Fleshlight Co corporation, um, who started, moved, created <laughs> all a headquarters. The are like him small, that a fucking big ass lion. Oh my god! Have you looked at the uh, have you looked at onit.com? It is wild. That's, that's fucking. I love it. 
so many just just so many tr- um, photos of trees from the ground up looking into the canopy and you're always like what does this represent oh, achievement Mind. <laughs> man fucking men's rights rules yeah there's no bicep equivalent. yeah bicep is a good thing to write on a shirt just a picture oh of you yeah it is bicep bicep that was my um, google plus circle was just i'm biceps. sad that they shut down google plus in 2019 this is what i wanted nine to talk years about. ago like, they shut it down nine years ago they shut it down five years ago well no they shut it down for like people nine years ago but it's one of those things where it's like you oh my god you know silicon valley the show does a really good version of this where they barf hey it was a great show and it uh, was not Wow. Yeah. John, once again, standing on fucking popsicle sticks. You're falling through the ceiling? No. Give uh, me entourage or give me nothing. Don't give me a don't give me nerd oof, entourage. Entourage. They say the uh, F oh. word with my last name in it like three times in the first episode. The first the, the first scene is literally like people that are different than us. Blah, 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 bad, 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 bad. Threesomes are good, but only with women. Oh yeah. I like it when they have twins. The first scene of Entourage is literally like, there's a trans person here, that's the worst. Also, these women did not agree to have sex with us, but they want to meet our friend. We're going to fuck them. <laughs> when was the end of the she, their trans puke joke? When was the end of it? Yeah. Because the right wing was really pissed that that happened. <laughs> there's people, no, I shouldn't say the right wing, but there's certain people who are like, fuck it, back in the day, trans people existed only as clowns. I don't think that there was ever really an end to it. There was just, there was a, a period of time that I'm going to say was 2017 where people were like, maybe we don't make all, like, maybe make these jokes in a more creative, interesting way. And they were like, guess again. Guess mm-hmm. fucking Let's yeah. move on to cuckolds. <laughs> there was yeah. a oh, whole I miss meeting. cuck so much. Cuck was, it's so fun to say. It's so fun to accuse someone of. It's also, almost it's really fuck. Fun. It just kind of means you want fucking, someone to fuck your fun. wife or husband. Also, I like that people are literally coming at the most generous people of all time please have sex with my partner all yeah. right also i really enjoyed one time i was at a pub in the end of 2017 and that was getting thrown around and someone had just started experimenting with polyamory and he took that opportunity after a couple of gins to go don't knock it till you try it. it's actually very interesting to to watch and enjoy and i was like oh you've t- you've really turned a corner <laughs> that hey, man, man now has an earring that man now has an earring, and That's I was good. like, oh, you're a swinger, you got an earring? And he's like, why is everyone saying that? And I was like, why do you fucking think, man? Why do you fucking think? <laughs> we should get earrings. I don't think anything outside of what every other uh, grown man wears suits me at all. So if I get an earring, that I remember I put Dylan, on a you would look golf insane shirt one with time, an and my I, friends laughed for five minutes. I will, pay, I will pay for you to get an earring, but I need to be there when you show your wife, because I assume... She will be hospitalized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from laughing so hard? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you pay for the um, earring. Earrings are like 30 bucks. I just want to get... That's why I'm fine paying for it. Me, what are you and, talking uh, about? me and a bunch of other 12-year-old girls, and we're and I'm crying, and they're consoling me. Like, I don't want to hurt. I don't, this like, Claire's has a very fun. clean smell, but I still feel like it's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, get, not getting it done at a tattoo parlor, getting it done at Claire's, and then trying to make pe- the people at Claire's give me a sick chest plate of a gorilla with my family crest. Yeah, excuse me, can I please have these fun sunglasses for free? No. Well, you you hurt me. That's a that's a thing that the white guy family crest tattoo, that should be. You should be put in the Hall of Fame after that. I got my family crest on my back. What is it? Oh they God. had to come up with one because we're not from money. <laughs> There's nothing more embarrassing than when you're in the at the Edinburgh fucking Fringe Festival and you walk into those like the Scottish Tartan tourist places and there's always an American like, we gotta find our crest. And in my head, I'm like, you're about to buy fucking Black Rod and be told that that's the McLeod crest or whatever the fuck you think your clan's name is. You fucking tour it. Like, get ready to be hosed by some Celts. I mean, yeah, that's the best thing. Yeah. I think uh, we're 193rd Scottish. Here's my family crest. It's a guy playing PlayStation, and he's tired. Yeah, exactly, man. Get the fuck out of here. All right, that was Google+. Plus. We talked about Google+, Google Plus the whole time, and you guys learned a lot of things. Thank you guys so Google. much for listening. Next Here's week. all the information you need about Google+. Plus. Go to patreon.com. Join our Patreon. That's all you know. Oh, wow. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank Next you. week, we're going to talk about the lifestyles and the rich of the famous. It's good, Charlotte. 
They were on the internet, I guess. Who gives a they shit? They were on the internet, and actually a much better subject than we realized when we originally put it in because of their weird influence on business and culture, Dylan. Oh. Sure, you can say that, or you can just say we're going to talk about some fucking hot twins. Good night. Oh, yeah, there's two of them and maybe more. Nope, just two. 